Hi, I'm James Hamilton from Stumpy Nubs Woodworking Journal, and today I'm going to show you how to make a complex molding from some common rotor bits. You ever see those big fancy molding bits in the display case at the woodworking store? I used to spend a lot of afternoons with my face pressed against that glass, just looking at their shiny cutters and smooth curves. But then, I'd just leave my nose prints behind because I wasn't going to spend 150 bucks on one bit to make one molding, no matter how fancy it was. So I'd go home and I'd look for ways to use the bits that I already have to make complex moldings. This is one example of how common router bits can do a lot more than you may have expected. It's a crown molding, such as you'd find on the top of a piece of casework, but it wasn't made with a giant bit and a powerful shaping machine. It was cut using four bits that you probably already have. It's possible because it was created in layers, which were then glued together to make the final molding. I'm going to show you how it's made, and then we'll talk about how you can apply the same principles to help you design your own moldings. The first layer is one inch thick. Now I'm going to trim that cove off the workpiece. It's always better to run a wide board through the router table and then trim off a narrow profile rather than running thin stock through and risking your fingers. The next layer is 9 16 of an inch thick. I'm using a quarter inch beading bit. You could also do this with two passes of a 1 8 inch roundover bit. After creating the bead, I flip the workpiece and I make another pass with a half inch core box bit, which is just a cove bit without a bearing on top. You'll notice that I'm leaving a little fillet between the cove and the bead that I cut before it. These fillets or flats divide sections of an overall profile by creating shadow lines. The final layer is three quarters of an inch thick, and it's created with a half inch roundover bit, but I've raised the bit just enough to let the shoulder cut into the edge, creating another fillet. So two visual components with one pass of one bit. This workpiece is going to be left wide because it will fit on top of our cove. Let's glue it up. The key here is to use the minimal amount of glue. We're not really worrying about getting a very strong joint. We just want it to hold together without squeezing glue out and making a mess that will be a pain to clean up. It's best to leave the front edge of all the parts all but dry. I glued the components together two at a time, letting the glue set up before adding the next piece. That does take some extra drying time, but it makes it a lot easier to keep everything aligned when you apply the clamps and I use wood calls to distribute the clamping pressure evenly. And here's our result. It's a three-piece built-up crown molding that looks like it was created with a giant bit on a shaper. But as you saw, we only needed a regular router table and four common bits. Really, the sky's the limit when it comes to the profiles you can make with common bits. It's just a matter of coming up with your own design and then dividing it into manageable pieces. Now here's a few tips that may help you along the way. First, select your material carefully. Straight grained material means less tear out, which means little or no sanding. That's important when you're dealing with something as difficult to sand as complex moldings. As you design profiles, keep in mind that large moldings look best if the height is greater than the depth. Also, don't go overboard. Too many details too close together will tend to run together when people look at them. And finally, keep the size properly scaled to the project itself. Don't put giant moldings on top of small casework and vice versa. For more ways to use your router in creative ways, watch for my new book, The Stumpy Nubs Guide to Advanced Router Techniques, coming from Popular Woodworking in late 2017. In the meantime, check out the latest issue of Stumpy Nubs Woodworking Journal for all sorts of tips, tricks, techniques, and tutorials designed to make you a better woodworker. You can read and subscribe for free at StumpyNubs.com. Happy profiling!